Welcome to another video session on this uh, unit four, that is the combinational logic circuits. This is class number 11. So we have done totally 11 class, uh, 10 classes so far. This is the 11th video session in this unit. So we have been looking at the different combinational logic circuits. That is how we combine the different gates and form the logic circuit. So, so far we have seen the different combinational logic circuits such as the binary adder and subtractor. We have seen the decimal adder. We have seen the binary multiplier magnitude comparator we have also seen the decoders and encoders in this session we will look into what are called as multiplexers now what are multiplexers and what are their applications is what we will be looking into in this topic on multiplexers Let's get started. What is a multiplexer? A multiplexer is a combinational logic circuit which has two power n number of inputs and it has only one output. Now, how these 2 power n inputs are selected and given as one output. So that is done by using what are called as the selection lines. So the selection lines select any of the, any of the 1, 2 power n inputs and present it at the output. So that's the concept of a multiplexer. Now let us look at the simple multiplexer circuit. Here, I have only one, one selection line. So that means I have, so, the number of selection lines, if you say it is n, then I have 2 power n. So n is equal to 1 here. So 2 power 1 is 2. So there are, therefore, I have two input lines and one output line. All right. So the output at any given time will be any one of the input that is either I0 or I1 that depends upon the another input called the S. So S is actually not the input or the data that is basically the selection line. So this will select which particular input is available at the output. So therefore, for this reason, the multiplexers are also called as the data selectors. Why? Because we say that the data is available at the input I0 or I1 in this case and the selector selects one of the input available at, I mean one of the data available at the input line and presents it at the output. Alright, so this is what is called as a multiplexer, whether sometime they may call it as a data selector or multiplexer both means the same. Okay, now so, uh, the select lines, the select line can be a 0 or can be a 1, right? Suppose if S is 0, then what happens? The true value of S is given to I1, the, I mean the AND gate to which 
i1 is given as an input and the false value that means if s is 0 the complement of that is the 1 so that is given to i0 so therefore i no i mean the and gate which has i0 as the input so when s is 0 the and gate to which i1 is given that one's output will be 0 because s is 0 so that true value is given to this and gate so anything anded with 0 is 0 so output of this is 0 this is since s is 0 the complement of that is 1 so the output of the first and gate to which i0 is con connected so 1 anded with i0 will be equal to i0 so whatever i0 value is selected through this or gate and presented at the output called y all right if i0 is 0 0 will be available at the output if i0 is 1 1 will be available at the output so therefore we have selected i0 when s is 0 now when s is equal to 1 the tr the complement of 1 is 0 so therefore 0 goes to this and gate so the and output of this and gate will be 0 whereas since s is 1 the output of this and gate will be whatever value present on i1 date input line i1 so if i1 is 1 output is 1 if i1 is 0 output of this and gate was 0 and we say that i1 is now available at the output y so therefore by just having one select line we are able to select between two input data all right and present it at the output so therefore we call this circuit as a data selector circuit so in simple terms if i have n input lines or uh, sorry n select lines then i will have 2 power n 2 power n input lines and only one output line suppose i have two selection lines then i have 2 power 2 is four input lines all right so therefore i will be selecting any one of the four input lines when i have two select lines and from that four select four input lines i will be selecting only one input and be presenting at the output so that will be the operation of the circuit for a higher number of selection lines so in general we say that two i mean n number of selection lines can be used to select between 2 power n number of data lines and be presented at the output one only one at a time all right so that depends on the selection line s okay so this is a general figure of what a mux will look like so it will be this is the the diagram to represent the mux so it is a wedge so here this side is broader and this side is narrower so why because the input it has more number of inputs and only one output so that's why this side is narrower and this side is broader and of course we should also show the select lines normally this is how uh, suppose for uh, this is how they normally give but if they want they can also give something like this let me just show you a uh, very concise way of writing uh, so this is another way of writing okay so this is the num output this is the number of inputs and this is the selection line so for brevity sometimes they will put a bar here and a bar here and if they put a bar as 8 and 
this is three. So that means there are three select lines. Instead of drawing three lines and eight lines here, they would write it like this. That means there are three select lines. So how many input lines will be there? Two power three is eight. So therefore eight select uh, eight data lines will be there and only one output line. So this is called the eight is to one mux. Now this is called a two is to one mux. This they write it as eight is to one mux. Eight is to is to one mux. So this is how the general notation is. This is a standard way of writing any mux. All right. So anyway, now that is the information on the diagrams whenever they are using mux and how they show that this is the general diagram of the mux or the multiplexer which is short in a, in a short form it is called as mux all right so i hope you have uh, the operation of a multiplexer is easily understood from this diagram all right so the or gate selects the data lines which are the outputs of the and gates all right so therefore we can also see this as a decoding circuit where the select lines performs the decoding operation all right so this looks very much similar to the decoding circuit that you that you have seen in the previous session all right so the select lines behaves like the i mean that does the decoding operation to say which particular input should be available at the output right okay in general as i said we can have 2 power n to 1 line multiplexer that are constructed from an n to 2 power n decoder all right as i said the select lines is what is performing the decoding operation okay so therefore n select lines can be used for 2 power n input lines so that is nothing but the decoding circuit so therefore and by adding the 2 power n input lines to each i mean one to each of the and gates so if there are 2 power n input lines there will be 2 power n and gates all right and the output of all these and gates will be given to one or gate which will be the output which will give the final output all right so this is the another understanding of this multiplexer in terms of so that that means to say a multiplexer is functionally a decoder right with all the decoding outputs ORed together all right that is what is the multiplexer what is a decoder a decoder will have n number of inputs and to power n number of outputs so using this n number of inputs you can decode to power n number of outputs right so that is what is a decoder it will have less number of inputs and more number of outputs what is that less than more n number of input in general and 2 power n number of outputs so that is what we have we can recall from the discussion on decoders so this is the multiplexer where all the outputs of the decoder are all or together and given as one output that means at any given time only one of the decoded output is available that is the understanding okay so that being the case now let us consider for a two select lines if you consider two select lines 
therefore 2 power 2 will be 4. So therefore you have 4 number of input lines and you can see that the same operation whatever we discussed so far with a with a single line and a, with a single selection line and two input lines and one output line circuit that that understanding can be now extended to the two select lines four input line so one output multiplexer so this is called as a four is to one multiplexer because i have four input lines and one output line so normally we don't talk of the select lines we talk only in terms of the four in the input lines and the output so we call this as a four is to one mux four is to one multiplexer it will multiplex that means at any given point of time only one of the input is available so this concept of multiplexers is what is used in the you would have heard of something called the fdm and tdm and all that okay so they are all the multiplexing fdm stands for frequency division multiplexing and tdm stands for time division multiplexing that means at any given if you say frequency division multiplexing at any given point of time by using this multiplexer you are going to choose only one frequency though there are multiple pre frequencies present in case of time division multiplexing so you will be selecting only one time slot though there are different time slots so that is what is the simple understanding on fdm and tdm so this concept of multiplexer is extended to many operations okay so now we have seen now let us consider what happens with this s0 and s1 when s0 and s1 both are zero when both are zeros then which line should be selected i0 should be selected why because since s0 and s1 both are zeros the complement of that will be high so both the complement or both the complemented output is given to the first AND gate to which I0 is given so therefore this is 1 1 ANDed with I0 will be equal to I0 value so if I0 is 1 output of this AND gate will be 1 if I0 is 0 output of this AND gate will be 0 so that means to say I0 is what is going here and uh, going as an input to this OR gate and the output of the OR gate will be I0. Y will be equal to I0. Now what happens to all other AND gates which are having I1, I2, I3 as an input? For all that you see that for the AND gate with I1 as an input, S1 is, uh, sorry, S0 is going as an input to the AND gate. Since S0 is zero, anything ended with 0 is 0 so therefore we are not getting i1 value even if i1 is 1 we are not getting i1 value here so output of this is 0 similarly the output of the AND gate connected to input line i2 is also 0 in the same way the output of the AND gate connected to the input line data line i3 is also 0 so we see that though there are inputs available in all these three i1 i2 and i3 we are not selecting them we are selecting only i0 and presenting at the output as y when the combination of the select lines s0 and s1 are 0 0 now let us see when s0 is 0 s0 is 1 and s1 is 0 when s0 is 1 so the complement of that is 0 so therefore the first AND gate output will be 0. The second AND gate will get a true value of S0. So therefore, this is 1. Since S1 is 0, the complement of that will be 1. So both the inputs to this AND gate will be 1, 1. And the other input to this AND gate is I1. So 1 ANDed with I1 will be equal to I1. So the output of this AND gate will be I1 
and if i1 is 0 output will be 0 if i1 is 1 output will be 1 and all other AND gates output will be 0 so therefore we say that when the common the combination of select lines s0 s1 is equal to z uh, 1 1 0 that is s1 is 1 uh, sorry s1 is 0 and s0 is 1 so that is 0 1 combination for that combination i1 is selected similarly for 1 0 combination that is s1 is equal to 1 and s0 is equal to 0 i2 will be selected and when both s1 and s0 are 1 1 then i3 will be selected so that you can see and verify from this diagram and we can trace the output so therefore we have now seen how a two select line having four input data lines are used as a multiplexer so this is a 4 is to 1 multiplexer so that means four input lines and two select lines are available for this circuit so by using these two select lines any one of the input of the four input are selected and presented at the output so therefore we have shown here the truth table for this multiplexer. It is the function table. You can also call this. So as we see, S0 and S1, when 0, 0, when S1 and S0 are 0, 0, output is I0. When S1 and S0 are 0, 1, I1 is selected, 1, 0, I2, 1, 1, I3 is selected. All right. So this is the multiplexer with 4 is to 1 multiplexer that means 4 input lines and 1 output lines now we can also this 4 is to 1 multiplexer is also called as a quadrupole multiplexer okay quadrupole multiplexer so we are going to use two such multiplexers and we will have therefore eight so that suppose we want to have two different datas that is b naught i mean uh, a and b we are having a is a four input and b is also four inputs so now we want to choose between whether we want to select the input a's or input b's then we can use a quadruple 2 is to 2 to 1 multiplexer. All right. And again, each of these output has to be given to individual, I mean, uh, to a OR gate because we have two set of outputs, isn't it? One output for this and one output of whether we want to select A0 or B0. And we can have any combination. All right. So this is what we are going to see here. Now, if you consider now we are going to choose between whether we are going to select the input a or input b by using the select line and we also have an enable unlike the previous case all right so we see that when enable is one when enable is high the complement of that enable is what is connected to all the AND gates. The complement will be zero. So therefore, irrespective of what the select line, whether select is zero or one, so that is a don't care condition. Since one of the input to the AND gate is zero, the output of the AND gate will always be zero because one ANDed with, I mean, anything ANDed with zero will be zero. So therefore, the output will all be zero. So we say that the circuit is disabled. It is not enabled. Okay, so this is the enable works for active low. That means when enable is high, the circuit is, disab uh, the circuit is disabled and when enable is low, then only the multiplexer works. That's what we are telling. All right. Okay, now you see when the 
we just saw that when enable is 1 the circuit is disabled when enable is 0 then the circuit is enabled okay so that means the circuit is active low so we call that as active low because because it is working for zero if it is working for high we will call it as active high it is active for enable being high now it is active for enable being low so therefore we call this as active low circuit is that clear okay now let us come back here so now since enable is zero that means the the complement of that will be one so all the and gates will be getting a one now let us look at what is the condition of s now when s is zero when s is zero complement of that is one so therefore the all the and gates connected to the a inputs that is a naught a1 a2 a3 they will be enabled and since s is zero the double complement of that will again be zero so therefore all the and gates connected to b will be all the that is b naught b1 b2 b3 will be zero because one of the input to the and gate is zero so therefore this will be zero and you are not going to select this so that means we can use this simply uh, this is an this is an understanding of how even for a memory decoding can work suppose i have two memory locations and the data i want to uh, we call the two memory locations as a memory location and b memory location and at one point of time i want the data available at the a memory location to be available and the next time i want the b memory location available so I can use the enable and select line to choose between the A location and B location. So that is how we can understand this circuit. Now this is for a simple. Now if you have multiple, you can extend it for multiple such locations. Okay, so now each location is having four bit. That is the understanding of this. So that can be our extra. Uh, uh, Ex uh, understanding extended to even memory so even when we are telling memory how we exactly access the data from the particular memory location is by sending the address now how does the address get decoded all right so there we are going to use this kind of multiplexing so that we get one of the outputs now you see that i have two data lines that is A's and B's, but I'm selecting only one of that and presenting at the output. So therefore, we see that we can select any one of it and be presenting at the output. So this is a quadrupole, two is to one multi, uh, multiplexer. So this is a, another extension of this multiplexers. So here we are going to use two sets all right and here all the data is simultaneously available okay we are using the select lines okay just to select between the four quadruple quadruple means all the four are directly available so there in the previous case only one data was available i0 i1 i2 or i3 right so output was only one but here in this case we are going to have all four all the four bits that is that's why it's called quadrupole. Quadrupole. Okay, that means I'm having four available at the output, not just one. All right, that is why it is called quadrupole. Okay, so with that, we end this uh, discussion here. In the next session, we will look into the application of this uh, multiplexer and how we can realize boolean functions using this multiplexer is what we will consider in the next session thank you